okay today i'm gonna discuss about equivalent nouns first of all forget about this equivalent part uh, what is a norm so norm we denote this as just uh, the symbol uh, norm is just a function from the given vector space to uh, positive real numbers so it basically what it does is uh, it takes a, a vector from the given vector space then it assigns a positive real number to it so this is basically the generalized version of the length of the vector so this is our just a two-dimensional vector we denote this as a arrow and we all know the length of length of this line segment is the uh, length of the vector so this has some properties this is never uh, this uh, this length uh, is never gonna be negative value so and uh, also this satisfy the triangle inequality such as uh, uh, this line segment has uh, some basic properties so we take uh, those basic properties and generalize this uh, notion of length of the vector into any vector space so this vector space can be any vector space including infinite dimensional vector space so for example this x can be a continuous uh, function space in continuous function space, space you have uh, uh, functions continuous function as elements so you take continuous function and uh, from this by this uh, you take a continuous function then it then then this function assigns a positive real number to it that's uh, that is what exactly does uh, this norm okay so and also uh, for any uh, given vector space there can be uh, multiple norms defined on it so not necessarily a one so because of this we come across the notion of equivalent norms so now let's see uh, what it, what does it mean by an equivalent norms okay so we say uh, let's say these two norms are defined on a vector space capital x we say these two norms are equivalent if 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 they are exist c1 c2 positive uh, constants such that okay such that c1 times simple x evaluate uh, the norm of simple x where well, i i will say what the simple x mean uh, and less than or equal to simple x again then this evaluation goes for the second norm then again c2 times our first norm for all x in x so actually what does this mean sorry okay actually uh, what does this mean it's it says we have two norms and we have if these two norms are equivalent we have this kind of a uh, inequality okay so simple idea of norms being equivalent is that we can compare those norms or uh, in other words the norms are comparable if two norms are comparable then those two norms are equivalent okay uh, it means these two norms behave a uh, kind of a similar way so in order to prove that uh, two norms are equivalent we have to come up with this inequality by using most of the time we have to use the definition of given norms and just manipulate it to uh, obtain this inequality so here not necessarily the middle term should be two you can place uh, 
uh, simple x inside the first norm, then the second norm goes to the uh, both of the side of this inequality. So not necessarily the middle term uh, should be two. It can be also a one. Uh, this one and two indicate just two different norms. These uh, norms can be anything. Okay. Now, uh, it's kind of uh, obvious to prove that uh, two norms are equivalent. We have to just uh, evaluate uh, the... Uh, uh, we, we just have to chase the definition of uh, norms in order to prove this inequality. So, the challenging part is to prove that given two norms are not equivalent. So, let's uh, look at some example. Uh, so, okay. I'll say this is a question. Okay. We have a continuous vector, uh, continuous function space as our vector space as our capital X. We have continuous function space between 0 and 1. So this symbol, what does this symbol means is basically uh, this is a vector space and it contains all the continuous functions between 0 and 1. The integral norm and sup norm are not equivalent. Okay, our question is that we have the vector space as the continuous function space. So two norms are defined on it, the integral norm and the sup norm. So we have to prove that uh, these two norms are not equivalent. So in order to prove that, in order to prove that we uh, first assume these two norms are equivalent first of all uh, what is what are the definition of these norms uh, the integral norm if the, the this f is a continuous function uh, between 0 and 1 uh, real numbers so if we evaluate this uh, the norm of this function with respect to the integral norm you will get the integration of 0 to 1, the absolute value of fx or dx. So this is the definition of the integral norm. And what is the sup norm? If we evaluate the norm of f with respect to the sup norm, we get supremum of fx, absolute value of fx, x in between 0 to one. So these are the two definition of uh, sup norm and the integral norm. Okay. With de these two definitions in hand, uh, let's try to come up with an inequality. Uh, come up with an equality. Yes. Okay. Now, just take this first one. Zero to one, the absolute value of f x. We can combine these two expressions by using an inequality. Zero to one. Now the sup norm. Sup norm is the supremum of all the absolute values between zero to one. Okay. If we put here. If we put the sup norm here, you will get this greater than or equal sign because the this term is the supremum of all the absolute values of fx. So because of that, we can uh, move this step to move from this step to this step by using a greater than or equal sign because of this sup norm being the supremum of these terms. Okay, now as I said, this is not a variable. The uh, sup norm of f or rather the norm with respect to the sup norm of this function f, just a real number because remember our definition of norm, 
of norm is just a function going from considering vector space to positive real number. So the image of this. So this is the image. You no, know, the image of this is just a positive real number. Because of that, we can take this term from outside the integration. Okay, now just evaluate the integral. This is just x from 1 to 0. This is just 1, which means it, this is just the soup now. Okay, now we have gotten uh, We have a one in we have an one uh inequality. The integral norm is less than or equal to sup norm. If we can prove this side also valid from like this, then we are done. But in this case it's not going to happen and we are trying we are going to prove it uh, not exactly uh, we are going to prove that this inequality not told we rather try to come up with the specific function which uh, leads us to a contradiction by assuming the these two norms are equal okay uh, now let us uh, try to prove i'll use a different color for this one okay Okay, first point is, first, assume, assume these two norms are equivalent. Okay, then, by the definition, by the definition, they exist they exist positive constant c1 c2 such that c1 times uh, here now our elements are functions so we can directly put the functions in it sup norm because it is the norm that is given okay so this is our assumption. These two norms are equivalent and this e equality holds. Okay. Now, let us come with the specific example. So just take this function. This is my function. This is clearly continuous function. And this is not just a one function, I rather this is a family of functions. The maximum value is being one. This is, I call it this as fn. So if you plug one here, you will get f1, which is just a straight line. If you plug uh, two here, you will get uh, this triangle ends with half, then the straight line. Uh, until it reach, reaches the one okay this is kind of a family of functions so this is exactly what we need okay so let us try to evaluate the integral norm first of fn it's just the integration of 0 to 1 of all the absolute values of fx from dx so 
this is a Riemann integral. So it's it's just the area under the curve. This uh, now we have the area of a triangle. So our good old formula half times uh, this length one over n and the perpendicular distance, which means one. So we will have just this is our first equation. Okay, so. Now we have evaluated the integral norm uh, for the uh, our specific example Fn. Now now let us evaluate the sup norm, which is just the supremum of all the absolute values of Fn x in between x of zero to this, this is effect. Okay. Supremum means in this case is just the maximum value of each uh, maximum value of each function. It is just basically the one because we have uh, the way we have developed this function it says the maximum value of one here. This is just a one. Okay. So it is just one. This is our second equation. Now, according to our assumption, this inequality should hold for these two values. Okay, let us pl plug this, uh, these values. I'll use a different color. Let us plug these, uh, these two values for the main inequality. Okay, we have C1, sorry. We have C1, then the our supremum is just 1 because of the second equation. Then we have the integral norm, which is 1 over 2n. Uh, then again, we have C2 times 1. Okay. Now, subject n here. Yeah. Subject n here. Half time, half over C2 n. Okay. And this side, take this side. This side, if you subject n, you have n is less than or equal to 1 over 2c1. Okay. This is a clearly a contradiction because n is a any natural number. And natural numbers are not bounded. But according to this inequality, it says natural numbers are bounded by some real number uh, 1 over 2 c1 so according to the Archimedean property it is not the case because of this we have led to a contradiction by assuming these two norms are equivalent so uh, we can conclude that the sup norm and the integral norm defined on the continuous function space is not uh, are not equivalent norms by the way of contradiction